what's up guys? Trying out something new today in today's video though. However, I wanted to talk about a very important topic. This is probably the number one most requested question that we answer on this channel. And that is, should you guys update to iOS 12? Should you remain on iOS 11.4.1? or should you stay on an earlier version of iOS, even one that is jailbroken, while we wait for a new jailbreak utility to be developed? Now, the number one reason why we're hesitant on making a video like this or about this topic is because this information changes daily, definitely weekly, so again, check the date down below when this video was published. If you guys want the most up-to-date information, again, check out our Best Tech Info website that has the latest information, always up-to-date, it's dynamically updated, so again, check the date, make sure you're watching this video in a timely manner for the latest and most accurate news. All right, well, let's finally get into answering this question. I know everyone on this channel is wondering, should they update to iOS 12? Now, with the information we have available to us at this current point in time, it's really hard to determine or say whether a jailbreak for iOS 12 or 11.4.1 is going to come First, now both firmwares in the future should have a jailbreak utility created and released for them. It's just hard to say which one's coming first. So let's just start off and I'll show you guys what we're doing with our personal devices. I'm currently on iOS 11.3.1. I'm currently jailbroken on my iPhone 10 and I'm staying put right there. Now one thing you guys can do, as you guys know, Coolstar advised users in the past to save their blobs for future iOS firmwares. I'd highly suggest to do that. Again, they're not the most reliable thing. Blobs can fail very easily. It's more of a last case resort to save them. I actually did for the very first time ever update this phone from iOS 11.1.2 to iOS 11.3.1 with blobs. I was pretty damn impressed with myself that it actually worked. It did break face ID. There are a couple caveats that you guys have to be aware of if you use blobs and they're not always a guarantee. But that is one thing you can do if you just want to take the hassle out of updating or not. Um, basically, blobs allow you to update to an unsigned firmware in the future when it's no longer being signed. I believe at the time, iOS 11.4 was the only firmware being signed, and I installed iOS 11.3.1. So that is one option you have to do. Again, if you're not on iOS 11.3.1, if you're on iOS 11.4 or iOS 11.4.1, if I were in that situation, I would personally just stay there at this current point in time. Why? Because at this current point in time, iOS 12.0 is the only newer firmware being signed. There's no 12.0.1. 12.1 is in beta, beta 2 as of yesterday actually, but it's not released to the public. So that being the case, at any point since I'm on iOS 11.3.1, iOS 11.4, or iOS 11.4.1, like I said, at any point, I could update to iOS 12 if new jailbreak information were to be released, suggesting towards an iOS 12 jailbreak. Now, in contrast, if you guys update to iOS 12 right now today, iOS 11.4.1 is the only firmware you can actually downgrade to, and that is because it's currently being signed by Apple. Again, that signing window will be closing very soon. I'm honestly thinking this Thursday potentially could be the last day to install iOS 11.4.1, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, in that case, when iOS 11.4.1 is no longer being signed, you are then stuck on iOS 12. But in the contrast, like I was saying, if you guys stay on iOS 11.4 or iOS 11.4.1, you always have the ability to update to iOS 12 with that being the only firmware out there. Now here comes the loophole. If Apple releases iOS 12.0.1 or iOS 12.1 here in about a month, then iOS 12 eventually will stop being signed. Now here comes the gray area. This is exactly what happened last year with a lot of users. They stayed on iOS 10.3.3, hoping for a jailbreak. Mostly people with the iPhone 7 that had yet to receive a jailbreak for that firmware. They stayed on 10.3.3. Then a jailbreak came out for iOS 11.1.2, and at the current time that the jailbreak was released, iOS 11.1.2 was no longer being signed as 11.2 replaced it, and that was the latest firmware. So iPhone 7 users really got screwed over in that point 
where if they stayed on 10.3.3, they could update to 11.2, but they missed out on the 11.1.2 jailbreak. So that is really where the gray area comes into play. But again, like I said, at this current point in time, as of recording this video, if you remain on iOS 11.4 or 11.4.1, at this point in time, you can always upgrade to iOS 12.0 as that's the only firmware released by Apple that's newer. So not that I'm suggesting that, that is just a fact. That is the reason why I'm staying on iOS 11, especially since I'm jailbroken. Like I said, I'm saving my blobs just to be safe. Not that I'm banking on that working, but that is you know, something to do in the background that potentially could save you uh, from losing out on a jailbreak opportunity. So there it is, guys. That is what I'm personally doing. If you guys want to update to iOS 12, be my guest, but just know in a couple of days, you're no longer going to be able to downgrade back to iOS 11.4. Anyway, let's get into some of the latest news as to why I'm staying on iOS 11. So Ian Beer, let's get into talking a little bit about him. He is from Google's Project Zero. He's the main developer behind the kernel level exploits for both the iOS 11.1.2 jailbreak as well as the iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak. Now, obviously he's not the only guy responsible. Coolstar is the developer who actually took his exploits and put them all together into a jailbreak utility, but without his groundwork, without his exploits, none of that would have been possible. Well, when he stated just a couple weeks back that he's releasing exploits for iOS 11.4.1, I got pretty excited. That is almost a confirmation that at some point in the future, these exploits will be released, and if Coolstar does what he did with 11.3.1, it shouldn't be too long after that for him to update the jailbreak utility Electra for 11.4.1 and 11.4 support. So pretty much with that being confirmed, at some point, iOS 11.4.1 will be jailbroken. Now, the main reason why I'm hesitant on just suggesting everyone to stay on 11.4.1, like I said, personally, that's what I'm doing, but again, the decision is up to you. 11.4.1, like I just said, will eventually be jailbroken, but now that iOS 12 is out, that is the main firmware that all of the other developers are going to be targeting. And even Ian Beer said that himself. Once he releases these exploits, he's going to focus solely on iOS 12. And that's the flagship firmware, the main firmware that is currently out by Apple. If they jailbreak it, it's going to make headlines and they're going to get a lot of attention basically. So that is why things can change on a moment's notice. We could tomorrow have an iOS 12 exploit be released for the public or at least vulnerabilities released with a write-up, which could very quickly lead to exploits. So basically the iOS 12 jailbreak scene could change at a moment's notice, just like that. And all of this information in today's video would be rendered useless. But like I've been saying throughout this video, an iOS 11.4.1 jailbreak is almost next to confirmed. So ultimately at this point in time, it sounds like Coolstar is still interested in making jailbreak utilities for the jailbreak community and public use. There's no drama getting in his way, slowing his progress down, but again, it's just in his spare time. Even once the exploits for 11.4.1 have been released, no one really knows how long it's going to take him to convert that into a final jailbreak utility for public use. So with that being the case, it's really hard to say when a jailbreak utility for iOS 11.4.1 would be released. You know, the exploits could be released tomorrow or they could be released in two months. And once they're released, you know, Coolstar could update the utility in a week or it could take two months to update the utility. So that's why it's next impossible to give an ETA, but it's looking very likely that iOS 11.4 eventually will be jailbroken. Now that is great and all, but like I've been saying throughout this video, iOS 12 on the other hand is the main targeted firmware. If anyone released a jailbreak utility without any warning, I mean, you guys have seen how demos have already popped off. If they actually released a public utility, that would make major headlines and would be the center of attention basically. So that would be a lot of incentive for someone to do that for iOS 12. Anyway, let's wrap up this video. Should you guys update or not? 
Honestly, I'm personally staying on iOS 11.4 at this current point in time. The only reason being why is because iOS 12.0 is the only other firmware out there that I could potentially update to. So it's pretty easy to stay on a lower firmware right now. When we get multiple versions of iOS 12, then it gets to be a little bit in the gray area. Anyway, I hope this video was somewhat interesting and kind of puts it into perspective of why it's so difficult to give an exact ETA um, and kind of paint the picture of what the future of jailbreaking is going to look like in the next couple of months to follow. Hopefully we'll be getting a jailbreak for iOS 12 or iOS 11.4.1 in the near future. Again, I'll be the first to update you guys if any breaking news happens. So don't forget to subscribe if this video was interesting and you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Again, my name is Tony, I've been doing videos on this channel for about a year now. It's been an amazing experience and I just wanted to do today's video, one for the fans, and just want to give a huge shout out and say thank you so much for reaching 850,000 subscribers, guys. That is just incredible. I really appreciate it. This has just been an, a phenomenal experience. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, but until next time, guys, this is Tony, signing out.